Hi and welcome to this tutorial video. My name is Carmen and I'm the designer behind New Leaf Designs. This tutorial video is all about my Shift Rainbow Blanket and how to start. The Shift Rainbow Blanket is a crochet blanket which is a free pattern on my blog newleafdesigns.nl. I will link all of the things you need to know down below. It is a chevron uh, blanket in a rainbow um, inspired um, colorway. So it's the Chev Rainbow blanket. And um, I had a request um, for a tutorial video as to how to cast on, although we don't really say cast on and crochet. So um, I'm going to show you how I cast on for my Chev Rainbow blanket. And I am using Scape Kiss, Stone Washed and River Washed you can find all of the yarns needed in the blog post, which is also the pattern, which I will link down below. Um, you can make this in stone washed or river washed from, from Scapius in the regular version or in the XL version. This is the regular version, which is a DK weight yarn. And this is uh, the XL version, which is a worsted or iron weight yarn. For the regular stone wash and river wash, you need to start with chaining 243 stitches. For the XL version, you need to start with chaining 195 stitches. So since I'm using the XL version, I will be starting with 195 stitches. The recommended uh, hook size for the regular version is four millimeter hook, which is a G hook uh, US size. And for the XL version, uh, the recommended hook size is a five millimeter hook, which is a H um, US hook size. But for the setup chain, you might want to use an even bigger hook. So this is my five millimeter hook. I'm going to use a six millimeter hook which probably is US size I, I'm um, not quite sure, but it's bigger than H. <laughs> and I'm going to start by chaining 195 stitches. I'm just leaving a 20 centimeter tail right here. It will be woven into the fringe later, so you don't need to worry about weaving it in. And I am chaining until I reach 195. I always find chaining a huge number of stitches, which you know, above 100 for me is a huge number of stitches. <laughs> um, I always find uh, chaining a lot of stitches. I find that daunting because I don't like counting my stitches, especially chain stitches, and um, I frequently lose count. Someone's talking to me, or I'm suddenly paying attention to the TV, or whatever. I just, um, I just lose count. So I have a handy tip for you, and that is to get a couple of stitch markers out, and I usually place stitch markers every 50 stitches so that if you lose count um, you don't have to go back to the beginning but um, you can go back to the last marker which you know could be a lifesaver if you're really bad at counting you might want to place a stitch marker every 10 stitches you know or every 20 stitches but um, yeah I don't have that many stitch markers. Maybe I have, but I just like to um, place them every 50 stitches. And, you know, I'm just chaining right now. I am not counting. Um, I will usually just chain and then stop and count. So let me see how wide this is. No. I need to chain some more because I have a rough idea of the width of the blanket. Uh, so I'm going to chain stitches until my wingspan probably. And then start counting. 
All right, I have reached my wingspan um, and I'm going to start counting at this end, which is really important or at least, you know, um, comes in handy if you start at this end. Okay, I'm going to use some stitch markers, which I got from my friend Narissa, who is Miss Narissa on Instagram and on Etsy and she made these uh, kind of gummy ball um, uh, progress keepers or stitch markers and the idea is uh, they match certain uh, clover amour hooks which is amazing so the idea is that if you use this color hook that you put this uh, stitch marker on your project and then you know which size you used. Amazing! But uh, this time I'm going to use it simply as a stitch marker uh, and not uh, because of the hook size. And I have a really weird way of counting because I like to count in three steps of three and then one which makes ten. So yeah, I found that I could count at most three stitches at a time without losing sight of the first stitch in that, you know. Anyway, so I like to count three, 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 ten, right? Three, 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 twenty, three, 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 thirty, three, 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 forty, three, 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 fifty. I'm just placing the stitch marker right in in that chain so you see so there is no question as to which chain stitch it's about and then I just continue counting from there So I have finished counting my stitches and I have three stitch markers on my chains which means at the third stitch marker there is um, 150 stitches and I have crocheted 40 stitches after that so that makes 150 plus 40 is 190 stitches and I need to crochet 195 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so now we can continue with row one of the pattern. Uh, if you used a larger crochet hook for just the chaining, be sure to um, switch to your regular hook again. So you can commence the pattern. And those three last crochet change that chains that we made uh, are turning change which which means that they will be slanted and they will form the um, leftmost or rightmost uh, stitch so those will be the side of the blanket so we are going to start by crocheting into the fourth stitch and for row one we start in the fourth chain from the hook and we chain 11 DC so that's double crochet one in each chain stitch so 11 DC let's see how much we have so this is the the chain three three chain, chain stitches. These also count as a DC but after that we need to crochet 11 more DC. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And now we're going to make the first point in our chevron. And to do that, we will skip two chains, uh, two stitches in this chain um, 
foundation chain. So we skip those and in the third DC, in the third chain stitch we crochet a DC and we crochet 10 more DC so that we also have 11 double crochets here and 11. So now you can see there's already a slight bend here and I have the XL blanket here. This will form one of these ridges like this. And now we are going to make one of the um, curves here and we are going to do that by chaining two before um, the next 11 DC and we don't skip any chains here so we just continue crocheting 11 DC in the chain stitches but because of those extra chain stitches we made on top there will be a curve in this um, in this part see and now essentially this is one repeat of the pattern you will have a multiple of these V's of these chevrons so now I'm gonna make the next one and I haven't made this chain that long it's just to show you so I'm gonna repeat it once um, I'm gonna leave two chain stitches here and I'm gonna pretend that this is the very last repeat of the pattern because at the end you will need to do something different and it's not 11 DC but 10 DC and then 2 DC in the last stitch so I'm just going to pretend that this is the end of my blanket three six nine okay so ten so this is what it says at the end of your row it says 10 DC and then in the next chain stitch will which will be the last chain stitch for you um, you do two double crochets and uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit more advice here so um, if you've um, made the correct number of chain stitches you won't have any chain stitches left here of course this will be the very last stitch and you can just cut this at about 15 to 20 centimeters length but if you have any chain stitches left then no need to frog the whole thing because I know crocheting uh, 243 chain stitches is a bit of a chore. So what I would do is that at the back of my work I would sew this um, onto the back, this end. And um, usually you will have less, like if, if you um, if you've counted wrong, usually you will have just one uh, stitch uh, more or less. So usually it is not that visible. So you can just uh, stitch that away here. No need to frog the whole thing. If you have too few stitches, so let me show you how I make more chain stitches. So let's say that I've come to the end of my blanket to the end of my chain stitch I mean and I still need to do one more stitch well I have a little trick for you and it's called um, foundationless chain stitch you may have heard of this before and I wrap my yarn around the hook as if to make a DC um, and I'm going to insert it take the yarn pull up a loop 
then I'm going to chain here so I have made one more chain stitch and then I complete the DC see I've made one extra and here there will be a little gap but again you can just um, use the end to, sh to sew that shut um, and since it was the very last stitch of the blanket you can also do your um, second DC in there because there should be two DC at the end of your blanket see it's just very easy so just uh, prepare as if to make a DC and then insert up until now it's all still the same as if to make a regular DC and then just chain one and then complete the DC right it's super easy so just some extra tips so you don't need to stress out over too few or too many chain stitches so now at the beginning of your um, row one we're going to attach the second color and I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that in the pattern I am saying to start with a standing double crochet and it's super easy to do that uh, instead of uh, instead of wrapping your yarn around your hook once you do it twice okay so just hold those strand those loops in place with your finger and then we will go into the top of this chain stitch because this is the first DC um, as it says in the pattern these three chain stitches count as the first DC so we insert the hook in the top chain stitch and then we complete the DC as if we normally would right there and we immediately do another DC into the same stitch and then this strand will be locked in place and then you continue with the rest of your stitches and they will all be in the back loop only so they will all be in the back loop not through both loops but just through the back loop so we start here and then you crochet double crochets until there is one stitch left before the bend I have done these two double crochets and then 10 more double crochets you can see that there's one stitch left here before the gap before the curve but we're gonna leave this stitch and we're also gonna leave this stitch so we're gonna skip two stitches and just go ahead with crocheting 11 DC in the back loop and that is how you create this chevron effect by decreasing stitches here and increasing stitches here you will create this wavy chevron effect as you can see in this blanket so here we decrease so we skip two stitches and here we increase I'm going to show you this part now So you crochet 11 DC magic number in this blanket is 11 <laughs> okay so I have crocheted 10 DC here so we still need one more DC and I'm going to do that in the chain gap so there's my 11th DC and now I'm going to chain two and double crochet one into the very same gap
and then continue on with crocheting my DCs until I have 11 here. And when I have 11, I will be at one stitch before the gap here and then I skip these two stitches and I continue on and same as with the first row at the end of the row you will crochet 10 DC and then crochet 2 DC in the same stitch which is the last stitch and at every beginning you leave a tail of about 20 centimeters and at every end you leave a tail of about 20 centimeters and you will use those to create the fringe and I have a separate video for um, making the fringe and I will just link to that down below so be sure to um, take a look at that as well I hope you have a lot of fun making this blanket and if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out my other tutorial videos see you soon bye bye Come you sit it. Come you sit it. Hmm? Oh, nay, 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 nay. <laughs> Momo, nay. Nay, Momo. Momo? <laughs>